I cleaned up my workspace a little because I'm feeling a project. But what to do? Now I browsed the Micro Center website for some inspiration and found this MOSFET. Now, according to the data sheet, it would be a good candidate for the regulator project that has been sidelined. Plus, I can retire the current MOSFET I've been using from a computer motherboard. Seriously though, VRM switching circuit components are no joke. This FET was rated for 50 amps. Anyways, when I got to the store, the MOSFET did not appear to be in stock. So I shopped around and found some more inspiration. There will be Bluetooth projects coming soon. I also found this kit, a component tester from Velman. Now I do not have a proper LC meter and thus no way to actually measure capacitors and inductors without a whole setup, my oscilloscope, a little magic. Plus, this tester is a kit and I haven't done a solder kit in ages. Now this kit was packaged about as well as any kit I've ever had, parts seemingly just thrown in, but the LCD was very thoroughly wrapped for shipping. In fact, I would say it was the most protected item in the pack. I also noticed the axial component bandolier had the resistors and diodes arranged in the order that they are called for in the instructions, with a gap between the component used on the LCD board and the components for the main board. On the topic of the instructions, they are online, found on the address printed on this card, along with the warranties and other product pamphlet. There is also the ubiquitous resistor color code chart. Now this video is not about the assembly of this kit, and it may get a little bit long. But instead, I want to talk about the project and perhaps test the kit at the end. First, why am I doing this project? I have acquired a free LED matrix panel from another individual who couldn't work with it due to the high power requirements and limited budget. Now he had bought it from Adafruit and their website recommends 5 volts at 4 amps. So you're not going to power that with a cheap voltage regulation module from China and most USB adapters only put out about 2 amps before the voltage begins to sag. I could have harvested a computer power supply for the voltage rails but that would be better suited for a benchtop solution. I would prefer a solution that could move with the project in case I decided to go anywhere. Now there are also boxes available that can produce the needed power, but these are large boxes about the size of a computer power supply, and they have a tremendous amount of current headroom. Also they're pretty pricey, so not the ideal option. The last option is to make my own solution. The topography will have to be switching because 4 amps or more if desired on a linear topography would require an impractical cooling solution for the regulator and Darlington array. The basic concept of a switching buck regulator is very simple. Except replace the switch with a MOSFET and come up with a feedback control circuit to activate the switch. There are monolithic ICs that can do all of this and have the MOSFET built in like this chip I have from Micro. But the lithography limits the current to 2.5 amps. There are also ICs on the market that handle the feedback control, but you have to provide the MOSFET and inductor. These provide the flexibility to make the circuit to your specifications without the limits of a monolithic system. But component cost increases and I have none of these lying around. I however do think I can make a discrete solution from things I already have lying around. So why do I need a component tester? Well, part of the DIY method for this regulator will require a large inductor to store all of the energy. My thinking is if the inductor is large enough, the control unit can oscillate slower. But in order to prove this, I need to see the performance differences of two inductors and know their inductance to gauge direction to move the project. Now I don't want to give too much away about the project, so for now, let's see how the assembly is coming along. Looks like I'm about done. Now let's test it. I have a few items for my bins that should gauge its viability as an instrument. Just the usual selection, a resistor, some capacitors, inductors, a diode, and some transistors. First up is a generic quarter watt resistor. Orange, orange, yellow, and gold. So 330K with 5% accuracy. 
The tester measured 339.5 kilo ohms, or 2.9% error, as an average across three tests. Next up is an electrolytic capacitor rated at 1,000 microfarads and 35 volts. And the tester took a little over a minute to measure the capacity, but read 942.7 microfarads, or about 5.7% error. Now I didn't test this one multiple times because that took way too long. But I have another electrolytic that measured at 1 microfarad. And with a much snappier response to the device read 983.6 nanofarads or 1.64% error as averaged across three. It's also worth noting for these electrolytic capacitors, the ESR and V loss were also recorded by the machine. Next in the gauntlet is a 470 picofarad ceramic cap, which read out as 472 picofarads, or 0.0425% error. Now these caps do not seem to have additional information published, but honestly, I don't think for most people it's going to be necessary to need any more information. These are mostly just used for bypass and decoupling. The next capacitor is a 220 picofarad which read at 217 picofarad, or 1.36%. Now for some inductors. I tested three because these were the main inspiration behind the purchase. The first one is 10 millihenries with a reading of 10.2 millihenries, or 2% error. These also gave the resistance, which is very important for my needs right now. The other inductor was 33 millihenries, which measured at 31.7 for an error of 3.94. And the last inductor was 1 millihenry and measured at 1.06 millihenry for a staggering 6% error. Alright, let's see how this thing does with some silicone. This is a 5.2 volt Zener diode, which gave some convincing metrics for the component tester, especially when compared to the datasheet. However, it never actually measured the reverse breakdown voltage. In fact, after testing a few diodes, I don't think this kit can identify the different diode chemistries at all. A diode's a diode, I guess. Next up are some transistors. First, a 2N3904 PNP bipolar transistor, which, again, had some very convincing metrics when compared to the uh, datasheet. The kit also successfully identified the PNP junction and the correct base collector and emitter pinout. Next up is a C945 NPN bipolar transistor, which again was positively identified with the correct pinouts, and the metrics were within a very reasonable range of the datasheet. I also tested a couple of MOSFETs which were successfully identified, and the kit even identified a thyristor. So to conclude this, I would like to say that this kit is everything I look for in a kit. It provides a useful tool while easily filling a few hours of time. The actual tool isn't anything special, but it will allow for easy component identification while providing a reasonable idea of the specs of the component. Now I got this so I could test hand-wound inductors, but the kit will likely see best use from component harvesting. There are other features that I haven't looked at yet, such as the function generator, but I suspect that they will perform about with the mediocrity expected from a device of this caliber. Alright, till next time.